Telecom TV, where ICT connects. Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm reporting from Bad Homburg in Germany, a spa town not far from Frankfurt. I'm at the SDN and Open Flow World Congress 2013 and I'm talking with Dr. Carl May, who is the President and CEO of Velo Systems out of Menlo Park in California. That's correct. Carl, welcome. SDN has been regarded, <coughs> spoken of as being the catapult, the mechanism whereby people are enabled to actually conceptualize and think about the notion of open networking. Do you agree with that? Yes. I mean, I think our, our whole view has always been that um, soft, what software-defined networking was going to do or the, as an architecture was it was going to allow different types of solutions to be delivered to customers and that uh, there are a number of side benefits that have come out of it, uh, the whole open networking, the whole notion that you no longer tie to a particular box, uh, that, um, uh, that, for instance, the innovation cycles of the software, the feature set with the hardware set are intimately tied together. Now what, uh, what SDN architectures have done uh, have not only enabled a whole new ecosystem of open hardware platforms, but beyond that, it's also enabled us as vendors to start thinking about decoupling the way in which we innovate, uh, that you can create a very rich set of hardware products and that those can be married to a very rich set of software uh, products that then get married together at the end in, a, uh, in an IT environment. So the separation of the innovation cycles enables what in particular? Well, I think the, the major thing, the innovation, the, the separation of the innovation cycles mm. has meant is that, that historically what you've, you know, what a customer has bought, in, in, let's, let's go back to the SDN context. So when you've bought a, a router or a switch, the software runs on the switch or it runs on the router. Sure. And so that, 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 now they're very tightly coupled. So as the, the hardware changes, the software has to change with it. Yes, you may actually have updates to the software on the, on the hardware, but that, that, but that still changes then more or less in lockstep with what the underlying hardware can do. What you can now think about, which you can now imagine is um, is an environment in which the the hardware you get a, we get a richer variety of hardware systems that are deployed, and what happens is the software now can be updated much more quickly. You can you can iterate, you can make changes, you can deploy new applications much more quickly, without uh, without really impacting that very stable base of hardware. And so I think that's really where the because we think of you know we really think of the the network as the system bus. Uh, the Velo vision was that what, what our version, what Velo's, our operating system was going to do or does, is it really treats the network as the system bus that allows you to plug in the compute and storage elements that then uh, serve applications. And so by, by separating the hardware from the software, we can now innovate much more quickly at the software. Uh, we ourselves, because that's what we're doing is innovate at the software level, is innovate much more quickly at the software level. In the past, network overlays have been popular for a long time, and they solve the problem. They do the job. Maybe not particularly elegantly or anything else, but they do do the job. This decoupling of the hardware and software will make a major difference in what way? Or what ways? Well, that's, a, that's a actually a good question. I think the, there are a couple of different points, I think, that, are, that you've sort of bundled into that, that question. So <laughs> let, me, let me try to I take them apart for a moment. Number one is there's, there's been an historical way of building overlays, the of VLANs, uh, is, is really the way that you create a virtual, a notion of a virtual network instance over a common physical uh, hardware platform or, or, or common physical hardware. What some of the early innovators in SDN did, like Nicera, which is now part of VMware, what Nicera did is they, they leveraged the, the architecture, the separation of control and forwarding uh, to build a, a, an overlay of their own that now ran independent of the underlying transport. So uh, the idea there was that they, they were really doing that in order to support virtualized uh, compute environments. So they wanted to make it easy for a virtual machine to be able to find another virtual machine. And they wanted to make sure that that virtual machine, that, that, that all those virtual machines could find each other 
independent of whatever that underlying network looks like. So that was interesting. One of the challenges, of course, that arises out of that is that neither one really has knowledge of the other. So now if you have a problem in the physical infrastructure, uh, that may then result in a problem in the virtual infrastructure. The idea of what, what Velo Systems has been working on is really more closely coupling the, uh, the functionality, right? So what, what we're doing is, is we're providing much better information from the infrastructure back up to applications. Um, and so going back to this decoupling and, and the way that, that overlays are built, uh, I think what, what we're really doing is we're, we're trying to su uh, support a much, an even larger variety of overlay types meaning nothing proprietary, no proprietary types of overlay uh, solutions. We actually, you know, we have chosen our own. We use a, uh, we have a couple of different mechanisms, but nonetheless, we partner with companies like NYSERA to provide a complete stack. What we do is by opening up our interfaces, uh, the interfaces that we have that connect into our software, we make it then easy for other parties to interconnect their overlay solutions into us. Um, in the past, in fact... Until the present moment, mm -hmm. vendors have always been very happy to pay lip service to some kind of standards in some cases, to adhere to them in others, but sure. not always. Um, and they have been very, obviously, it's their job to look after themselves and to, to keep, as, keep as many people locked into that particular vending, vendor company as possible. This is going to make a big difference to it, isn't it? Because they're not going to be able to lock consumers, customers in the same way as they have in the past, and it's going to be much more user-centric than vendor-centric. I think it's a very good point, and so let me take a moment to talk a little bit about the founding of the Open Networking Foundation in that context. Sure. <clears throat> the Open Networking Foundation, I think, is unique in its founding and in its, in its charter in that it was created by the users. Uh, and so consequently what you had is you had a number of users getting together both enterprise and carrier, some big names, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, uh, Microsoft, Verizon, Deutsche Telekom, uh, NTT, a few others. I'm, I'm sure I'll offend the, the one or two that I've forgotten, but <laughs> I, I, Can't remember them I apologize for that right now. <laughs> uh, but, but the whole idea was let's create a framework for user-driven, so demand-driven feature sets so that we weren't, we, we were going to, uh, so, so that the vendors who participated in that we're not going to be thinking from the outset, how do I go in and lock these customers in? Rather, we need to think of different ways of innovating. Let's, let's contrast that with other types of uh, other standards organizations, both historical and even more recent, that have, in fact, a very different view of, uh, of this. And they, too, are, are sort of reverting back to the vendor-driven notion that we're going to tell you what's best. We're going to tell you how to, to do things. Now, we as a, as a company that is, doesn't want to lock ourselves out of markets, we're no. going to work with whomever we, we have to. Sure. It, puts an, excuse me, it puts an added burden on us really to make smart choices because you have to go where the market is going to be. Our bet, um, and, and so let's go back to, to, the, to the point that you were making. I think that the real benefit, the ultimate benefit of of the user-driven communities, such as ONF, is that it is driving companies like Velo and, frankly, many of the other members uh, of the Open Networking Foundation to think very differently about how they innovate. We are, and so, you know, one of the things that we talk about is, is, uh, is uh, that there are really three areas in which we try to innovate as a company. Number one is architecture. Uh, number two is operational, uh, operational simplification. The number three is that business model. And so what, what a user-driven, what, what this whole change in innovation has done for us, uh, or this, this, this new way of looking at innovation, is it's forced us not to look at a single axis or a single vector for innovation, but it's, looked at, it's, it's forced us really to look at all of them together because that combination of those elements is what has allowed us to stand out in the marketplace. You can't really have a situation where, um, where simply having... The, the fastest product is necessarily going to, going to win out in the market. You really need to look at all of the different elements uh, of, uh, uh, to succeed. And so uh, we have to think of very different monetization models. Right? We're, not, we're not necessarily selling a box. So we actually don't sell a box. 
So you're not, you're not selling a box. You're not selling software like a box, right? Some people tried. We, we saw that early on, uh, even in the SDN and the OpenFlow world. There were companies who were trying to sell software as a box. Okay, it doesn't look like a box. It's not packaged like a box. But we're going to charge you like it's a box. Well, guess what? Some smart person in an analyst job at the customer said, well, well wait a second. You're still charging me on a per port basis, so you know, what's, what's the difference, really? And so I think that the, 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 uh, the innovation is not merely technical. It is also, it's also forced many of us to think very differently about the business model uh, and the way we go to market and the way that we enable others to collaborate with us to bring bigger solutions to market. We'll have to stop it there. Interesting stuff, though. Dr. Carl May, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Good talking to you. Telecom TV, where ICT connects. <laughs>